we're back here live in Dell World. This is theCUBE, this is SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv's flagship program. We go out to the events, extract a signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with good friend Tarkin Maynard, who runs the cloud computing business here, former CEO of Wise. CUBE alum, great to see you again. Good to see you. <laughs> Tarkin, great, great to see you. See you. John, good to All see right. you. All right, always dynamic, Tarkin Maynard. Um, we love having you on theCUBE because one, you're dynamic, you're, uh, you talk faster than I do, okay, <laughs> which is amazing for CUBE, getting the most uh, content, and also you're a content machine. Um, you're the GM of the cloud computing with Dell. Uh, so my first question for you is, also you were, you were in charge of Wise and was acquired by, by Dell. We've talked about that on theCUBE before. But I want to ask you a question just about what's going on at Dell World, and specifically Michael Dell. We've had access to Michael Dell twice. You introduced us at VMworld. He saw theCUBE. He saw the magic of the cube, wanted it here, we came here, we're excited to be here. But he's accessible, he was out pounding the flesh with the people, his customers. He was at the concert, he kicked off the concert. He's a founder, he's 47, 48 years old, and you know the- Younger than you are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was the same, graduated high school the same year, but, but you know, he's the founder and he's still here and he's making it happen, and uh, he's not going anywhere, he hasn't even gone anywhere. He's been around, yeah, yeah. he's no comeback, he's always been there. So, so what's it like inside Dell with Michael Dell to helm as, uh, you know, they're still the young founder and uh, making these moves. Yeah, I'll, great question, man. I'll tell you, we talked about this last time at the VMworld, right? It's been a few months. Yeah, um, August, September. So yeah. that was a great event as well. This event is going nuts. It's fantastic in Austin uh, for Dell World. I'll tell you, Michael has been, uh, uh, you know, uh, great, fantastic. You know, you, you, you know, acquisitions are usually difficult, right? You know, you're buying uh, a small company. In this case, why was a small company? Dell bought us cultural differences and so on, you know, different size, and, and Michael has been an, a force. He's been fantastic to work with. I've known him for, uh, uh, you know, uh, some time, but I'll tell you, with Tyndale, uh, um, like you said, his humility, the way he does business with the customers and partners, talks to anyone, he's part of the business, he's not necessarily, you know, on the big ivory tower, makes a big difference. And that's part of the reason, you know, myself, my team, we're welcome here, and, and then we like that kind of a culture. That's kind of a startup mentality in a 60 plus billion dollar business. Makes a big difference with the customers and partners. So we're enjoying that. And I, I can tell you, uh, um, even though Dell is big, and in this size of a company, when you look at the IBM, you know, Cisco, HP, Oracle Sun, you know, all end to end solution providers, I feel Dell is the most startup one. The you know fastest one, more agile, and partially because of the chairman, CEO, the founder, and executive management team who keep things you know fluid, who keep things basically fast and moving like a startup environment, and that goes a long way. And you can feel that in the event. Yeah, and he does it right. He had a great musical venue last night. The band was fantastic, better than any event I've seen in terms of events. They had Bill Clinton on stage was keynote. Um, so wasn't great. he great? Bill uh, Clinton was phenomenal. amazing. Phenomenal. That guy, I'm just unbelievable. You couldn't yeah. take notes fast enough. Right? Absolutely, he's so and he's so and you know at this age, he's so coherent. Yeah. You know, it, it was a great presentation. And, and Bill Clinton really made the internet happen. I mean, the joke about Al Gore saying he invented the internet, but the reality was that the internet in the 90s, under his tutelage, you know, he the Absolutely. domain name system wanted to go under UN control. The Department of Commerce kept ICANN was a domain name system that fostered the web and innovation behind it. So he had a great tech policy, so props to Bill Clinton. Uh, we can get more into that, but but what are you working on now? So you're now in so, Dell, so you're running the cloud, GM of cloud, what does that mean? So bottom line is, you know, as wise we, at that time, uh, before the acquisition, we were the global leaders in cloud client computing, basically providing a secure, manageable environment for any kind of a thin zero client device. Also managing mobile devices, thin clients, zero clients, cloud PCs from the cloud. Uh, security manageability, overall uh, network management, cost control, service level management, part of the story. Now as Dell, we have this concept called reverse integration. We're building a lot of additional IP around what WISE did with additional uh, capabilities with the backend. In the back end, you know, the big story is convergence. But let's step back for one second. We talked about this, you know, six months ago. I will, you know, stick to the story. The five big areas that we see from the customers is social, mobile, virtual, converged, contextual in the cloud. Social, mobile, virtual, converged, contextual in the cloud. Everybody's going social. We're all going mobile in some shape or form. You cannot deny it. Look at the numbers. What's Apple doing with the iPhone? What's going on with Android Galaxy numbers? They're going crazy. I mean, we we're expecting 600 million smartphones. That number is going to one to two billion uh, units in the next few years. 
the game is changing fast. Yes, we're shipping 400 million PCs. PC is still valid. We're still shipping that. There are 1.5 billion PCs out in the market. But having said that, the growth of mobility is a reality. Mobile security, mobile management, and tying that to virtual. To go to cloud, we need to have that path through virtualization, desktop and server. And the big piece of that continuum is the convergence. How do we converge in the back, in the data center, server, network, and the storage with an active integrated system managing all the workloads through VDI or ERP, whatever that means, and also at the end user point with voice data video. Convergence is going to be a big deal with big data with the contextual intelligence. So having said all that, now as the Dell Wise business unit within Dell corporate, we're bringing all these pieces under this business unit with what we call cloud client computing business unit. I'm running that business unit with my team and, and the team is psyched. We brought in some amazing people from Dell Corporate and Dell, Dell uh, uh, Core. And now we have an end-to-end -end solution portfolio. It includes server, the storage, the network, the active integration, the active system, and tying that through software for security manageability with zero clients and 10 clients. So my sales organization today within Dell sell all those components from the data center to the network, to the software, services, and end user clients. Look. You guys know, this is public information. Last year we finished less than $400 million in revenue as Wise individual company. We're growing nearly to 300% level this year, the first fiscal year. We just had a $300 million quarter last quarter. So in one rocket. quarter. Tell so it's rocket 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 ship. Oh, this is be this over a billion dollar. This, is a, this is a billion more. dollar plus round eight yeah. business for us. And I'm just very public about that because I want to make sure the customers understand. Some people are going around and saying, oh, desktop virtualization, I'm not sure what's going on. It's happening, it's happening. I just got back from New York City with our top, top financial institutions. The numbers used to be 10,000 units a year, 15,000 units a year. Now we're talking about 80%, 90%, the entire user population in the largest banks in the world happening today. Mm -hmm. It's so, going to happen so, in a big way. Tarkin, so when we first met you at, uh, I think it was Citrix Synergy, Synergy yeah. we were very, very impressed with your vision around, well among other things, but your vision around this edge of the network, the thin client, the no PC. The zero client. The zero yeah. client, yeah, and so that was awesome. But now let's go look at Dell, the messaging. You know, from the core of the network, um, to uh, data center, to the, net, uh, to the network, to the cloud, and you're hearing Dell say words like edge, the edge of the network. That is what you were doing. So, so what does Dell have? Do they really have that nice edge? What is going on at the edge of the network? And what does that mean? Is it mobile? I mean, mobile business is hurting right now right. with Dell on the numbers. Right. Um, an area of improvement. What do they have for the products right so now? So, very good question. So, look, at the end of the day, there are current you know, challenges and trends in the marketplace. You know, from the economic downturn, compliance, emerging markets, uh, obviously, a social, corporate social responsibility is a big deal. Some people are overlooking this thing. This private partner, you know, private public partnerships in the economy, going to education, healthcare, doing things with governments, it's a big deal. A lot of opportunity there. With the economic downturn, there's a lot of money going on right now. Money doesn't go away, money is still there. How we extract that money for the right solution, the right benefit of the humankind. So there's a lot of deals going on over there. Innovation and obviously shareholder value, they're all part of the ecosystem of these trends and challenges and opportunity. Within that context, with the social, mobile, virtual, converged, contextual in the cloud, now we have a solution portfolio end to end that I did not have at Wise and no other company has. I really believe that. It's not a BS, it's not necessarily like, you know, typical marketing talk. No other company has all these components coming together and customers are realizing that. Yes, some people have servers, some people have storage, some people are networking, but bringing all these things together in a unified computing and actively integrated computing infrastructure, secure it, manage it, connect it with the right networking and software glue, with the best, best end user platform portfolio, which includes PCs, for those people who are still going to buy PCs, we're still shipping 400 million PCs, but also zero clients, and also think clients, and also mobile devices acting like PCs with all the things that we've done with Pocket Cloud. Why is Pocket Cloud becoming at the receiver on an Android device, on an iOS device, or on a Windows 8 device, connecting you to your you know, virtual machine resources in the back end? Changes the game. So in a sense, our story has been not a device. Device is not a big deal. Any user, any user, any content type, voice, data, video, from any type of app, legacy, Windows, web, or a native app, and for, for any time, anywhere, but also on any device. So as part of that story, PC is part of the continuum, 
And as a company, we have all those pieces. IBM doesn't have the PCs. Uh, Cisco doesn't have the PCs. HP has some of these things, but they don't have yeah, the but, zero clients. But Dell's, so not, but Dell's not a zero client company. They're a, like a big client company. They sell a lot of notebooks, a lot of tablets. They have Windows 8. That is totally true to that. But I'll okay. tell you, the, the way I would position it, John, Dell is not a client company. At the end of the day, the Dell's vision is, as you it's heard from Michael. It's a, it's a B2B market. It's an end-to-end -end solution portfolio. It's a, it's a IT solution provider. At the end of the day, people tell me, are you a PC company, are you a server company, are you thinking like, you know what, in a sense, you heard from Michael, literally, literally 50% of the organization is all in services. Uh, services revenues are- 47,000 people, people. I mean, this is a big deal. It's a service company. So, and as you know, technology, you heard from Bill Clinton, from the, uh, from the president. IT is a service-centric solution. It's a means to an end. At the end of the day, we have all those components in, in terms of hardware, software, and services together. Yes, the origins of the business is a thick PC, fat PC story from 1984, 85 time frame, and that gave us our foundation. But now, when you look at the organization, look at the investment for the past two, three years, the last 12 months, $5 billion investment, they're all data center services and uh, virtualization and cloud computing. Nothing is PC related. So we're building around the PC, we, we've been building that, and the transformation is going working very well. So I want to uh, drill into that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, go so ahead. When we first met you at Citrix Energy, you had one of your devices, right? right. We were making fun of our dinosaurs for the right. laptops, right? Now, people think of you, uh, think of Wise at the time, as a, as a hardware company, but there's a lot of software in there. I want to understand that a little better. You talked about 400 million now growing in a rocket ship, beyond a billion at some point in time. Talk about the software components and specifically what, what Dell has brought to the table, what being integrated with Dell has brought to the table so look, as it relates to software. So, so, so from a software perspective, as you know, desktop virtualization as a path, as a, as a medium for ultimate open cloud computing is all about software. You know, the devices, I mean, you, you know the uh, 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 white box uh, uh, phenomenon. I mean, a lot of these cloud uh, uh, service providers are buying white boxes now. Is the box by itself is not the differentiator as you know. You know, look, three of us, after this, let's go fly to Taiwan. In Taipei, we can start a new white box company in yeah. about 13 minutes. Yeah. You know, the, the bottom line is the differentiation is the firmware, security, manageability, availability, and reliability, and doing everything is, you know, nice TCO level, nice TCO way, and doing it with the right software. And that software comes in terms of security, manageability, availability, reliability, and scale. Our software did user optimization, our software did security, our software did management, and doing that from the cloud is a big differentiator. You know, doing that in a client-server mode, like the companies did in 1980s and 90s, is a one way of doing it. But as Dell now, we're putting everything in the cloud, both into your private cloud, but also from ourselves with our public cloud. Today I spent some time with Verizon, some, some, some time with AT&T. We're doing deals right now with SoftBank, with NTT in Japan. There are tons of things we're doing with Swisscom, MTS in Russia. All these telco service providers are looking at our software and saying, look, I'm going to use my own cloud infrastructure. I have all these data centers as a telco. It's in a liability column today, all that investment. I'm going to move that data center from the liability column to an asset column on the balance sheet for the CEO, not for the CIO, for the CEO, for the shareholders. And the technology to do that is our software. Some of our gear, some of our hardware, but most of our software and services. And that's the, that's the uh, I believe, the multiplier value effect is. So as we move forward, you're going to see more client software, more networking software, and more data center so software coming together for security, manageability, availability, reliability, and more scale for more users. Look, are you guys going to be at CES? At CES, Consumer Electronics yeah. Show? You guys got to come. You guys got to be there with a cube. Uh -huh. I'll tell you. Uh, we'll get the cube. January, CES. January 7th, 9th First time show. frame. January 7th, 9th time yeah. frame. I'm just doing this uh, 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 you know, uh, formally here. We're going to show some amazing new technology. Some amazing new software and form factor technology is going to change, in my opinion, the way we do client computing from the cloud. You know, some of those technology we've been working on for the past 12, 18 months. And that technology is going to be all security, all uh, open management, and giving more resources and capabilities for the users at home, at work, on the go. At home, at work, on the go. Not only at the consumer yeah. level, but also yeah. at the enterprise. So, so, so obviously Michael Dell is up there. It's, it's no surprise to us to bring your own device to work world. BYOD, they say, uh, bring your own device to work. It's a, we're in that world, no, right. no brain. We Absolutely. talked about on the cube earlier. He also talked about the, the converged infrastructure. You mentioned that. Sure. This active, he calls it active infrastructure. What is active infrastructure? Because obviously you, you're playing at the edge, the client right. software side of a really beautiful edge. The edge is very important. Right. Core of the network to the edge. Marius Haas answered that my question yesterday. A core to the edge is their strategy. 
But what is this active infrastructure? Is it very enabling good. new services? So, so very good question. So first of all, let me, let me clarify one thing. Convergence is not only the, in the back end. I, I'm still talking about this, some of our customers about this. There's this misnomer, misconception. Convergence is only in the back end. Convergence is entirely from the back end to the front end from the end user to data center. So in the data center with your storage server networking and all the glue bringing these things together with the active infrastructure, basically the systems management tool, a systems management framework that managing the workloads throughout all those layers. Today, when you look in the past, you know, you're buying service from vendor A, storage from vendor B, networking from vendor C. Every single topic, every single layer comes with its own systems management, security, asset management, all these utilities. It's a nightmare for the data center, it's a nightmare for the CIO. You know what, so many CIOs tell me, Tarkan, please stop selling me one more systems management tool. They have a systems management tool, inflation. You know, it, I, I just talked to the CIO, <laughs> I just talked to the CIO. Managers. That's a, that's I'm telling you, they're right managers there. of systems managers. Systems management, inflation. Uh, you know, in <laughs> no, these no, people. Systems management, a cliff. A cliff, <laughs> <laughs> another <laughs> cliff for you. Uh, speed of the cliff. But I'll tell you, they don't have enough people to train on these type of software. So with active infrastructure, with the active system, our goal is, the, the framework is to manage all those layers, all those workloads, uh, 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 from one location with a simple GUI. And by the way, one other thing people don't talk about in the, in the industry, data visualization and beautiful GUI. Simple user interfaces. You know, when you buy a new car now, the entire system is all touch, everything is simple, fewer buttons. That's the goal. So when you look at the you know, new solution that we have called uh, Project Stratus, now it's a GA, it's our new systems management tool from the cloud at Dellwise, as part of the uh, uh, overall systems management solution. Um, which, which you call Cloud Client Manager, it just went GA. When you look at the GUI as an administrator, you don't see buttons. Everything's simple, touch screen, few buttons, few d d directives, and you can manage a user from anywhere you want to. So having said all this. Any user, anybody's any infrastructure. User, any user have in the infrastructure. All and you know what? You have your iPhone, you have your uh, uh, you know, tablet of choice, Windows 8, whatever that might be. You're traveling to Japan, you're sleeping. The system is intelligent enough, context aware enough of the location and time, turns off your roaming. Without, when you're sleeping, because as you're roaming yeah, yeah, at yeah, night, sure. you're not doing roaming, and you're just yeah. being charged all that money. So think about the yeah. new contextual intelligence built in the systems management with simple GUI. So anything, iOS, Android, any, any Windows. Any operating and by, by the way, when we talk about the convergence going back, that's the back end side of the story. Now tie that to the front end with voice, data, video. Now think about platforms are going to be almost free, delivering you phone, video, and data services through virtualization under 200 bucks or free and as a service. This is happening today. This is going to be happening today. So we're getting the, we're getting the, uh, almost a hook here. So you wanted to bring up a CIO to chat with us? Yes, I have one of my good friends, Madge Meyer, who, uh, who uh, has been, Madge, where are you? Come over here. Madge so has have, been uh, the Madge Chief Meyer, Innovation Meyer, Officer. Hi, Madge, oh, good to Bank. see you. Madge is with us in, in, in Austin. <laughs> Madge is a friend of Tarkin's. Again, friend, Tarkin has many good friends, of course. He's a friend of ours, and this is theCUBE, our, our flagship program. We've got the events, a lot, of, a lot of extraction of the signal from the noise is happening here, but also a lot of, a lot of friendships, a lot of smiley faces, a lot of, a lot of good times. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, um, so Madge, tell us. Okay, we saw the CIOs up there with the case studies. We saw Michael Dell talking about Barclays, but I found the Tulane conversation interesting, how after Katrina, they had all this work, legacy projects lined up like airplanes and, and IT, and all of a sudden, boom, disaster hits. Clean sheet of paper in a way. What is the challenge of the CIO today? Because they have that legacy and they, they wish they had a clean sheet of paper. Yes. How, do, how do you innovate with the legacy uh, like you had a clean sheet of paper? Okay, let me back off a little bit first. My CIO is not abbreviated. It's a Chief Innovation Officer. It's not Chief Information Officer. And why, I work, I work for State Street Bank right, for many years, more than 10 years. And uh, when I started, I did the infrastructure. Now you're talking about hurricane, you know, all these uh, natural disasters. For a bank, we cannot even afford to lose a millisecond or all that. So what we, I have done that time when I joined State Street, first thing is disaster re recovery, business continuity, that's a huge focus. For bank, like uh, Sandy just went to the East Coast, it wasn't an issue at all because we got the whole system set up, recovering another region. 
so that nobody was nervous about it. So you live right. by high availability. Absolutely. You cannot have downtime. I call continuous availability. <laughs> high availability is not it's, even good Assumes enough. it's low. It's always exactly, continuous. Exactly, because we cannot have interruption at all. Yeah, yeah. So what our future, Tucker was talking about cloud computing, is we will have the active, active, active model, I call three locations, or running the same thing, same time. And then you have a low balance to you know send the information transaction to different location based on where the availability is. So, so that will be seamless. So Tarkin mentions that you're writing a book right now. Is that true? Yes, can, I am. Can you share with us a little bit of a, 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 can you? a taste yes, of what's coming? Absolutely. Thank you, Tarkin, for giving me a chance to share that. I was very fortunate when I was a, a chief innovation officer for Safe Street. I was giving a lot of speeches. At the end of one speech, one of the publishers offered me a contract to write a book about innovation. And so the innovation really about how can company make innovation, not an event, not an initiative, it's a business as usual. Because without innovation, you're never good again. So it has to be a part of the company culture to allow people to innovate all the time. What do you need to do as an individual, as the team, as the corporation? And I also talk about eight different skills you need, like listen, lead, connect, commit, right? Promote, you got to promote your idea. Provoke, you got to challenge people, right? Get ready and uh, execute. If, you know, vision without execution, it really is hallucination. In the last so. 30 seconds before we get, we're getting the hook big time, getting the yeah. signal. In the last 30 seconds, just explain to people, why the book, what's the main message of the book? The message of the book really teach all the top executives, including CEOs and all the new young people, how the innovation should be a part of your responsibility every single day. Not an event, it should be a corporate goal and a tool that you can execute. Let me add one last thing to this, this is hugely important. When you talk to any CIO, any CEO, there is this imaginary virtual line. Below the line, above the line, below the line, all these things you have to do just to run the business. Keep the lights on, right? And above the line, all those innovative new ideas, new applications, and new opportunities to grow the business. Unfortunately, for the past three decades, all the CIOs, all the CEOs focus, how can we keep the lights on? And 80% of all budgets are focused on that. Only 20% or less is all about innovation. What Madge is doing with this book and with the ideas around the book and talking with other executives and we're having other conversations, how can we move that line from here to here so more and more activity is on the above the line, there is more activity on innovation and, 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 and revenue generation rather than just cost control, rather than just keeping the lights on. Keeping the lights on should be the minimum of the we, business. We are in an innovation bubble right now in a good way. Real build out on the enterprise. You're seeing people focusing on top line revenue generation. Absolutely. I love CIO with the chief innovation officer because at the end of the day, uh, big data is everywhere. Innovation is a standard. Um, it's making use of that data and uh, infrastructure to create innovation. Thank you so much, uh, Maj. Appreciate it. And Tarkin, great to see John, you. John, great we'll to see you. We'll be with our next guest after this short break. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you.